Hey guys, it's Ilya. Thank you so much for listening to the Jam Room Podcast hosted by Sam and Ilya. If you like us, please consider supporting our Patreon. You can find that in the YouTube description or in our podcast description or on our Instagram at Jam Room Cast. Thank you so much. And now let's get into the episode. Welcome back. To the Jam Room Podcast. I'm Sam. I am Ilya. We are here with our amazing... We are here with BC Villanova, born on a morning, on October. Nice! <laughs> I know you your intro. Right. Fun. Nice, you know my intro. I surely do. Wow. I love Brian, it. Brian, I've spent a lot of time around you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm blessed to, to have spent time with you. Oh, yeah. And congratulations to you guys. This is freaking amazing, man. Oh, like, yeah. I've been keeping up with your stuff. It, like, looks great. It sounds great. Like, Thanks. in the heart of Columbia, the jam room, where a bunch of historical and classic records have been made. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, this is... Absolutely. I'm, I'm proud of you guys. Man, thanks. well, thanks for being here. We appreciate Brothers, it. Brothers, someone get a crap. Start off the podcast just... Proud of you guys. Saying nice things about us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank oh, you. That's is, is awesome. Love it. <laughs> wow. Jason's doing a great job. Shout out to Jason and his wife. Whoop, whoop. Ooh, early shout out for Jason. But yes, huh? shout out Jason. Um... All right. Well, we just let's 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 dive into let's it, dive. as they say. Deep dive. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, I've worked a lot with you, uh, specifically with Villanova, mm-hmm. which I love. Villanova, shout out. Um, not the school, not right. the basketball team, well, but the band. No, nothing against them; they're probably great too. But you know, sure. But the only Villanova in my heart. Is I can't thank you, Ellie. I love it. BC Villanova. Love yes. It. Yes. Love. It. love um. It. But yeah, I wanted to ask you first about like how did you get started on guitar? Mm. Um, and I know you also sing as well. You play keys. Like, give us mm. your your start. What what got you into it? In third grade, my big brother Chris, who's ten years older than me, uh, I had this beat up acoustic guitar around the house, and he taught me a song called Sanitarium by Metallica. That was like my nice. first intro. And after that, I was like putting on shows. Like me and my buddy would put on like concerts in our little suburban neighborhood in Lexington. Like we would uh, charge ten cent, and you could come to the backyard. And I, he, his instrument was like a trash can. Nice. And I and I would play that guitar. We just like saw we'd make up the stupidest songs. Like we would have like concerts, and uh, we'd look like fireworks for pyro and stuff. And uh, man, that was like fourth grade. You know, like so already it was like yeah, whatever. We're gonna be showmen, bro. You know, <laughs> that was back before anybody said bro. They're like that. Oh man, but you know. pyrotechnics in fourth grade—that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. You dedicated. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, that, I mean that's kind of what pyrotechnics are, though. If you think about it, it's just like bigger scale fireworks, I guess. You know. I have no idea. I've never done hard yeah. so. <laughs> I just know that it burned uh, James Hetfield's arm off one time, so it's like probably a good. Uh, you probably just shouldn't do pyro. Why not? Unless, unless you got it really figured out. Yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to just walk like the wrong place and just be. Like, yeah. Like, oh God! And then somebody <laughs> yeah. comes up with a extinguisher. Yeah. That'd be rough. Yeah. That'd be rough. That'd be rough. No, but no pyro like that for us. But uh, so young age, I was off and running already, and um, I was like self-taught, you know. And um, I was, like, supposedly a gifted kid. You know how that always works out? Like, mm. the gifted kid that's just got a bunch of gear later in life. He's just, like, the weirdo guy by himself, you know? That was me. But, uh, yeah, and then, um, so, taught myself. And then in middle school, I met, like, uh, well, first of all, did you guys ever feel, like, when you were playing music, um, kind of, like, ostracized and, like, in like your own desolation, like, kind of lonely? Did you guys ever have the, the lonely days? Oh, yeah. Just me? Yeah. Okay. No, no, you no, guys, yeah. Yeah. no, definitely. Yeah, okay, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. I feel like so. Right before I really met people that I was going to play music with, I had I was like in sixth grade or something. I was like really the only person playing guitar, I think. But um, the rest of my friends were big jocks, like into sports and stuff, and I grew up with them. But I was just like really by myself a lot, and like kind of I didn't even know the word depressed. Like you don't mm-hmm. know the word depressed in sixth grade. Sure. I yeah. I think you're just like yeah. kind of sad and playing by yourself. Wait a second, not like that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? About, why did we already go there? Right, no one else took it there. Okay. You know what I'm saying, though. (laughs) Sixth grade playing by yourself. Why can't you just say that? Oh, my gosh. And it doesn't get a laugh, you know? But you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, the sixth grade playing with yourself. And uh, (laughs) every time, let's move on. Playing guitar in sixth grade. Thank you. All right, let's move on. But um, but I remember it's like uh, I had this, like, birthday party. I think my dad, like, told some people to come but they were just there for like free pizza or something it was like one of those kind of things you know like sixth grade and you're just kind of feeling like losery and an outcast 
But then seventh grade hits, and all of a sudden, all the Oak Grove kids like joined the Lexington kids because, like, you know, when you hit middle school, all the elementary schools like combine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's where I met like the punk rockers and the skateboarders and like the metal kids. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I'm not the only weirdo. And that's where I met like my real best friends. And um and I felt like part of a community all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I met my best friends Lewis Jowers and Jonathan Clark in like seventh grade. And Jonathan, uh, he's like super tall, big sideburn guy. Like he could do like a nolly kick flip over a trash can or something. You know? I was like, all right, this is the coolest guy I've ever met. And um, <laughs> like, uh, so we started getting into the culture of like shoes and and skateboards and the whole nine and and just bands you know and just different kind of music and i actually like taught him how to play guitar i don't know if you ever had this experience but like you teach your buddy how to play guitar he knows nothing and then all of a sudden he gets better than you you know what i mean (laughs) like dude what i just showed you how to play and now you're you're playing like all these 311 songs and but and tool songs and i don't even know how to play them so uh that happened to me with Jonathan. Like, I taught him how to play guitar, and then, like, three months later, he's, like, smoking me playing all this, like, classic rock or something, you know? Dang. I'm like, what the crap? So after that, after high school, like, I dived in. I was like, I'm not going to let Jonathan show me up. You know, so I started taking from uh, from Robert Newton. So uh, we were talking about that a little bit. Robert Newton, um, for anybody who doesn't know, has just a major impact on South Carolina, on Columbia. He had a, a jazz... Um, progressive jazz band called Lotus Feet back in the day and he taught like basically um, not to get into the whole like teaching thing of the whole thing but he if you are any good at music and you live in the Columbia area or South Carolina you probably took from Robert or took somebody took from somebody who took from Robert or you're like influenced by Robert you know including you guys um, in some capacity because you know he uh, Robert was the man and he taught um he taught Les Hall, who was in uh, played with Trey Anastasio and Howie Day. Dang, and uh, that's and, cool. Yeah, he, he taught uh, John Blackwell, who drums for, who drummed for um, Prince and Justin Timberlake, and he and he taught uh, Les Cleveland, who drummed for uh, Patti LaBelle, and like the list goes on and on. And um, so Rob was like the man. He taught Don Russo, taught uh, like just all the all the dudes that are pretty good. I would say like sure. around here, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, a lot of the jam room cats. Like you know, Rob worked with them, and he did a lot of stuff with jam room. So. Um, anyway, shout out to Robert Newton's family and uh, that whole thing. So started talking, started taking Rob out of high school. Didn't want to let my buddy John show me up. So then I started getting into like uh, just to nerd out like the vision system and uh, yeah. diatonic modes one through seven and pentatonic patterns, cage system, like all that kind of stuff, and, and actually know how to play. Versus like, hey, I know uh, the whole Nirvana and Sublime record, dude. I'm a guitar player, you know. Sure. Which is a good way to go too. Definitely. But. Uh, yeah, so so then I started playing music uh, with my my brother in a band for a while, and um, and then so I, I was really like playing out and every night of the week doing like acoustic stuff with my brother and uh, just getting like drunk and just just like passing on a bush at like oh, man. Kelly's Pub, you know, like now it's called the Aristocrat, but back in my day it was called Kelly's Pub, and man, you would probably like. Pass out in a bush there. Well, wow. I can see that. It does have yeah. pass out in a bush kind of vibes sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Maybe yeah. Still, people still pass out in a bush with the aristocrat. Yeah. I don't know. Wouldn't Some things me. don't change, you know? Yeah. yeah. But like, it was cool because you start playing music out and you're like, oh, like I've got a pocket full of money and I, I hadn't paid a bar tab in 10 years and I'm hanging out with my brother. This is cool. And, and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, we were talking about the college thing too because I had like a short stint in college. And I think we. Yeah. You know what, what, I mean? what specifically did you do in college? Because this was very impactful to me personally oh, when yeah. you told me about your college experience. Yeah, we were all just kind of talking about that whole concept. But like, so I went to college for advertising and I minored in music. Like, my parents were like, you got to go for school for something else, like something solid. Like, advertising, like, that's that much more of a solid career than music, you know? But not. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I took all my music classes first, then I just dropped down anyway. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it's... But okay. I don't know if we should go into this, but like, do, do you really have to go to college to be successful in this country? You know what I mean? Or anywhere? Definitely. I, well, I would say definitely not. It also depends a lot like on your field, obviously. Right. Uh, yeah. That's that's a whole can of worms right there. But mm-hmm. for, for yeah. musicians, it's like... Like, I know there's like a big debate, like, should you go to a music school if you're a musician? Yeah. And it's like... 
that's a tough decision, you know. Well, okay. Doing a lot online. The mu- all right, like specialized stuff, like a music school or you know audio institute or whatever, like that is different than going to a college and taking a bunch of algebra and biology stuff that you may or may not ever use in your life. But whatever you're going to use for your career, like for sure, I think you should study. But um, I think we're talking about this like people get so much anxiety and just craziness about like feeling the pressure to go to a major university when they're probably just going to freak out and 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 feel like a failure and possibly flunk out. When like you don't necessarily have to do that, you could just start making money in your field, or like uh, start a video production company, or like you know, or like whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I feel. Yeah. I feel like it, a lot of times it just makes sense to go to school if you like have a strong direction for where you're headed. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's. I feel like with you know post grad stuff like that, it's it's like it's not really worth doing if you don't have a clear path like towards doing what you want to do that involves take like going to a four-year school like that anyways I'm, yeah, I'm no expert agreed. no <laughs> I, I agree with you sam and the thing is like no if you're gonna be a doctor or lawyer or whatever like please go to school if you're a doctor like don't, <laughs> yeah don't just try to fix me up one day and be like yeah study for like a year and drop that bro let's, let's have a look at that leg you know like that's funny you know sure no, you got to go to school but i'm just saying you don't always say it's not for everybody is what i was trying to say sure yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, i Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, again, very, very impactful to me yeah. uh, personally <laughs> when yeah. I was doing exactly what you said and right. freaking out and not sure what yeah. to do and in college and being like, I don't I don't really know what to do with this. Right. Um, and then, yeah, when you told me and you you're like a person I looked up, I, I look up to a lot. Um, right. And that. yeah, you were like, oh, I took all my music classes and left. I was like, <laughs> see, mom and dad. No. Dang it. <laughs> that's funny. Now, Tina's like, what did you tell my daughter? You tell her you dropped out of school, Brian? Come on. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, that thank you, Ellie. I appreciate that, and I look up to you guys too. I I, I adore you guys. It's awesome. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, if it's causing you that much stress and stuff, it, I don't know. And people do their career at like nineteen and twenty and blow up in other ways. Never want to cut. <laughs> Wait, shout out to Jason. Whoa. Just looking at Jason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like Jason shout out today. It's kind of kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, study and you, you got to work hard and that kind of thing. But sure. like sometimes it's better just get going your direction or whatever that is and. Up in a van and tour the world, play music, drink PBR if you want. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not too many. Yeah. Not too many. <laughs> responsible amount of Shout PBR. Shout out to our sponsor, PBR today. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I wish. Drink responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, your main project right now is BC Villanova, correct? Isn't yeah. That well, it? I'm in a lot of projects, but uh, so the Villanova thing, we still do shows, and we got some shows coming up. Uh, we're playing the Cinco de Mayo festival in Myrtle Beach, and uh, we're playing in Wilmington. Uh, speaking of Wilmington, I got a I got a little bag of surprises that I'd like to share it's with you. It's not drugs. Yeah, it's not drugs. <laughs> or is it? No, it's not. Okay, but uh, yeah, um, but yeah, we got some shows in Wilmington and stuff like that. So we're still playing, like you know, the Villanova yeah. thing. We mainly do like festivals and private parties and stuff these days. But we'll, sure. we'll get together to play. But uh, I, I release original music as BC Villanova. Gotcha. It's mm-hmm. just easier to find on Spotify. Yeah, and um, you know, with the whole period of like. I, I'm like apparently the worst band namer ever, you know. It's just like I thought Villanova just rolls off the tongue. That's a great name. Thank you, man. Yeah. It, but it's just been problematic in terms of people finding us on Spotify, and then they're like, "You guys are awesome! Like, we're gonna find you." And then and they find like a different Villanova. Mm. It's like a rapper from France or something that's mm. not even me and, and Bobby yeah. and Abel and whatever. So uh, yeah, hmm. but yeah, and then we went by um, the name Weaving the Fate for a while, mm-hmm. you know. And that's like that was a different whole name thing. Let's do this sunglass thing. Is that right? <laughs> sure. So uh, speaking of Wilmington, North Carolina, I, I got an um, uh, awesome lady by the name of Jilly Jill, who's a fan, and she always gives me like gifts every time we play there. Nice. So like she knows I love like giant old lady sunglasses. Mm-hmm. And so last time I was there, she she was like, "Do you still like giant sunglasses?" I'm like, "Yeah." So she gave me this bag. So I thought it would be kind of fun for us to like try on. Oh these yeah. Today. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see what you got. Like, yeah. I'm very excited. Give it a shot. Let's yeah, all these see. bright camera lights, you know, we get, need some need some shielding. Yeah, she gave need me these. Lenses. These are kind of like a staple. Oh, these are oh, yeah. cool. They're super huge, which I, like I those. love. They're massive, yeah. Yeah. Very fun. Sam, you want to? Oh, you want to pick some out for me? Let me see. What What do we want for you? Let's Let's have you match Brian a little bit. Nice. Okay. And then I like these these funky geometric ones. Yeah. Um. A little, a little waspy there. Yeah. I remember when you you told me. And this could be different now, but I know that because I asked you when we first started playing together, like, why do you wear the sunglasses all the time? And you said it's like so you don't have to look anyone in the eye <laughs> on stage. Yeah, no, honestly, these look genius. good, bro. Look at that. Nice. Yeah. How about that? Look at these kids right here. There we go. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Very fun. Yeah. 
<laughs> we can mix and match. Let me see. Let me try. What these you got here? Out. Yeah, I haven't tried these. Uh, and it's still these yours. Are just gigantic. So I love huge. feeling like a, a giant alien or a bug. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are very Absolutely. good on you. Yeah. yeah. Man. And they're yeah. smooth. This works. This right. definitely works. Maybe yeah. we should wear these sunglasses like every podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of the visual branding aspect of things. You yeah. Know? yeah. I feel like well, it's also like a big thing when you're like in, in a recording studio, like working mm-hmm. in a recording studio, to have like just some really goofy looking sunglasses, you know? <laughs> like you see all these like like yeah. studio engineers with like, you know, those like yellow, like aviator sunglasses. Oh, like yeah. why are they wearing this? Like what's the point of this? Right. Is it just like it's a... It's just the look. Yeah. It's you like the, the recording engineer look, you know? Maybe so. But... Yeah. All right, let's, let's trade now. Let's see what you okay. got. Yeah, let's, you try these on the suit chat. Let me, sure. Let me try these. Yeah, I'll give you these. Yeah, let's go. And Man, maybe you guys can tell wow. us. Wow, is a look. What's the vote? What's the best ones? I yeah, don't know. there yeah. is. You can you can like add a poll on Spotify. So if you were listening on Spotify, look down beneath. There's gonna be a poll on something related to sunglasses. <laughs> we'll decide that later. Yeah. <laughs> you just. I'm yeah. so used to seeing you in gigantic sunglasses. Yeah. So yeah. It, it works. I love. No it. matter what they are. Yeah, and some of my friends pick on me. They're like, hey, bro, my grandma wants your sunglasses back or something like that. I'm like, hey, I'll take your grandma's sunglasses. Yeah, I love, yeah you got to keep to it. Yeah. Definitely. It, they're just, they're, they're big and you look like a mosquito and uh, nobody can, like, See your eyes. penetrate into your soul. Mm-hmm. Their eyeballs, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Which can be very nerve wracking when you're yeah. on stage and you're trying to just do your best and you perform, like, original music all the mm-hmm. time. Um, so, yeah, I can imagine you don't always want someone just, like, staring in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what if they did just came up right, like, just... That's happened. I feel like people, well, they do, I guess. Yeah. I feel like I mean, people have done that. That's happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah, it's also, like, I feel like it's a really strong, like, branding move for you. Like, if, if you're always on stage with these, like, crazy-looking, massive white sunglasses, yeah. it's like, oh, that's BC. Yeah. I can tell because it's white sunglasses, you know? Right. Yeah, it's kind of nice to just, like, it's put a on one thing and be like, all right, there's me. Like, that's like my Superman. style. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah just it's put like on a costume. Yeah. yeah, alter ego. Speaking of costumes. Yes! Segway! What? By the way, those look good. I feel like you should have, like, a bunch of gold rings right now and like some gold chain like that's kind of like I always uh, got the accessories well, on flute. well you always do it and you, but it, like those glasses in general like it's kind of like yeah you're your fancy business lady in Beverly Hills or something right now I don't know definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you, like you look like you should be in a band with Lenny Kravitz I, like, would, I would be in a band with Lenny Kravitz <laughs> Lenny Kravitz hit me up I'll yeah. play with you Lenny be fun. Shout. Uh, so you, yeah. you mentioned costumes earlier uh, tell us about the Bat Band yeah Okay, so uh, that I guy had, Batman who you don't know. You're that's not right. I don't with. know much yeah. about this band. Sam, From what you've so heard about Batman, wish I could help more. Right. But uh, I heard they're great. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it'd be cool to to play in a cover band because I've never been in like a straight up cover band before. But I thought it might be stupid for like me to be in a cover band, you know, because I play original stuff and I played especially around Columbia for like ever. So I was like, oh man, it'd be cool to like cover my face somehow, you know. And I was like, okay, wait a minute, like play dress as Batman, like Michael Keaton era Batman, and I spent all this money on like a suit and stuff. So then I had to start getting gigs to like justify buying the suit or whatever, you know what <laughs> I mean? So, uh, but I was thinking like, like who do you want to see on stage playing a bunch of? songs like cover songs or whatever just some random dude or batman you know it's like yeah let's go batman and i'll get all my musician friends to dress up with me and we'll get crazy with it and you know like have a bunch of guest stars like hopefully have you guys well we did have you guys oh yeah that's fun but it'd be cool to have you in like costume uh one gig too make that work we can definitely make that work what kind of costumes will we use we gotta pick batman Batman characters right yeah well dc characters yeah happy for now Mm. Somebody was like, "Hey man, let me be Iron Man." I'm like, "I'm more of a DC band yeah. right now. I love yeah. Marvel, but just you got to you got to keep it in the DC cinematic universe for mm-hmm. sure." I think so. Yeah, for absolutely. This dude, Aquaman for Sam. Hey, I would ah, do it. I would do it. Let's go. I, I can't. I don't know if I'm like as buff. Who's who played Aquaman? Was it uh, Jason Momoa? Jason Momoa. Yeah, I, don't, I can't really look like Jason Momoa, but you know, I'd, I'd be you into it. Buff, you got the long hair. Well, hey, I do have long hair. That would, that would work pretty well. I think you look good, man. Yeah, I love the Batman cool thing because it's like, I, you know, I, you know, I say this as someone that plays a lot of cover band gigs, but there's a lot of cover bands out there that don't really make, you know, can't really make a super strong impression, even if they're like killing the covers they're playing. But you just like you just put on some Batman costumes, and it's like that's its own thing, a hundred percent. Like like there's no one else doing like cosplay cover band work in Colombia. Like that's like such a like I don't know. I, I love the idea behind that and it's such Thank a unique you, yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah, but. we've only done it a couple times, but there's bands out there. Like there's a band called Galactic Empire and they're coming to New Brooklyn Tower. Yeah. Right? yeah. But they're they're all Star Wars characters. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. they play actually like I think the John Williams score but like kind of metal it out a little. Nice. So nice. 
But um, yeah, cool. and there's bands out there. There's a band um, called the Spasmatics, and they dress up like nerds. Like they have like pocket protectors and tape on their glasses, and they play a bunch of '80s stuff, and they yeah. kill it. Like play like giant corporate events, and like it's fun. Yeah, they just make bukus of money doing it. So I was like, that might be kind of fun, and it could be like a revolving cast and um, have some friends, and like even you know if like Darius Rucker wants to come dress up as a character one day, like nobody knows it's him or like that'd be, Sony or, or that'd be awesome. Yeah, like Edwin McCain or something. Like have yeah. some of those dudes, and and it's like who is like, that? Who's Green? Land or not, almost recognize him. Bro. I recognize the that, guitar. You know? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's like the goal, and we're gonna play like uh, C- Comic Con this year and stuff. Nice. So, nice. yes, yeah, so we're still that's kind cool. of finding our footing, but uh, it might be cool to play like kid events possibly. But for right now, we've just been playing for a bunch of drunk adults. Sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But I f- yeah. I feel like drunk adults would really appreciate Batman playing in a bar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I think so. It's I was, pretty exciting. I was kind of like thinking about the bat because obviously, like we saw you at Tin Roof a while mm-hmm. ago. Um, and I was like, man, like the Batman coverman thing, this would kind of work for like kids parties. And then I thought about like all the like old Nirvana songs y'all were covering. And I was like, the man have changed the set list a little bit. We're playing like Corn and Tool and like, oh, man. hey, Timmy, happy sixth birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's fun. Man. Are you right? <laughs> and then it's just like a cake comes out. No, oh, man. I don't know. I would, that would be, that'd be a good birthday party. I would, I would love to experience that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thanks, man. Wow. It's, it's been fun. The, the whole time we've done it, we've only done it a couple of times, but it hasn't really caught on like that much yet. Sure. But the whole time, people are either laughing, filming, or actually dancing. So mm-hmm. that's like the three responses we get only. You know what I mean? For that. Because it's and so it's ridiculous. Down. You know, because it's not trying to be serious. It's just like the more funny, the more we can make people laugh, the better. So definitely. It's just yeah. cool. You know, I like being original bands and singing about sad songs too. That's great. You know? Yeah. It's good for the soul. It's good to do both. You know? It's good yeah, to do both. Do both. So, sometimes yeah. it's about the art, and sometimes it's about just like giving people a good time. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with either of those, you know? Yeah, for sure. And if it's a good time for them, it's a good time for you. It's true. You know, we're I think so. energies feeding both ways, usually. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. So you have played a lot. How long have you been gigging like around the Midlands? Like how many years? Oh, yeah. Uh, not that good of math, but I don't know. Rough estimate. Yeah, like. So early 2000s is when I start playing out with my brother, so I mean, yeah. And then I a couple formed, decades? Yeah, a couple Man. decades for sure. I, did, I played in, um, and Villanova started, I think, like 2006 or 2007. It's like our first record. And uh, we come to tracks here, actually. Oh, and shout out to the Jam Room. My very first, like, EP was um, me, my buddy John, and that I told you guys about that um, I, I told him how to play guitar, then he got better than me. Nice. So I like, damn it. And uh, he played bass because he switched over to bass. So, bassman. Oh yeah. yeah, you're like one of those dudes. You play it all too. Try true. Yeah, master. Yeah, you know, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Kind of. Well, yeah, 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 whatever. whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. this girl slaps some bass too. Slap oh, yeah. bass a little bit. So, <laughs> who gets to play bass with well, y'all? Kind of like you should pass the bass back and forth. It, maybe it changes like a lot. To. The same, like since the formation of the Sam and Ilya band, like it's changed dramatically. Because originally, actually, our first ever gig. Shout out Zach. Uh, tracking us right now. Ooh, it was ooh. me on bass. Ilya was just singing. Zach's playing guitar. That was the ev- first ever like Sam and Ilya band gig. It was like that. And I think uh, DT Weber was playing drums. Then mm-hmm. Chris Phelps the next night. Um, but it's changed from like me playing bass to like you playing bass. And you still play like play bass a good bit in like the band and the trio and stuff. But now Absolutely. it's like sometimes we'll, like hire a bass player and I'll play guitar. Mm-hmm. When but you're doing, always like, on guitar now. Yeah, always on guitar now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. It's just kind of tough to like people can do it. People can do it. But it's tough to like. Band lead when you're on bass, you know. Oh man, uh, singing and playing bass is crazy too. Yeah, I don't and, know how yeah. she does it. It's crazy. It is, yeah. Well, she's just extremely talented. talented. Absolutely, yeah. All right. lovely. <laughs> so ah. you, you've played a lot of gigs. You know, we established somewhere around the you know 15 to 20 year mark of gigs, yeah. which is a lot of. I mean, that's a lot of gigs. Longer if you count the backyard elementary school. That's true. Uh, mm-hmm. Pyro fireworks. Yes. Yeah. So. So I would love to just kind of pick your brain about like booking mm-hmm. gigs and mm-hmm. entertaining crowd. Like so. Uh, I feel like a big part of booking gigs is like maintaining the relationships with like booking agents and stuff, For sure. which sounds yeah. like really like business and like official, but like I just noticed like you were really good at it and you like have these like really strong relationships relationships with the people that book around Columbia. So like mm-hmm. I, I would love mm-hmm. to just hear you talk about how you maintain those, how you grow those, how you build onto those and mm-hmm. how you can like steward those connections. Sure. Yeah. I think uh, a good thing. For anything in this life is like put yourself in that person's shoes and figure out like how you can both mutually benefit yeah a club owner wants to sell alcohol and he wants people to be paying money to come into his club so if you can bring 100 200 people in his club he's definitely gonna book you for sure yeah and if you can't quite do that yet maybe you guys can work something out 
and um, you know, just work your ass off and uh, get get as many people there. Invite all your friends, family, you know, moms, whatever, cousins to the show. I mean, whatever you have to do, man, give out free beer, give out like free yeah. marijuana, whatever. I don't know if that's allowed, yeah. but just, just anything like um, give make barbecue for them, whatever, yeah. like. I, I never done, did anything with these things. I'm just saying. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but it is like after you play, like yeah. those people could have been anywhere. They mm-hmm. chose to come see your dumb ass. So you go out there and you talk to every single one of them and be like, dude, thank you for coming to the show. Like, yeah. let's take a picture. Let's get a drink. Let's do whatever. And and, it, and I promise you, it'll it'll multiply. Like, yeah. people yeah. tell friends about it. Like, man, we see this band. They were cool. And the, the, the guys were so cool. They hung out with us afterwards, whatever. And um, so you just got to keep humble about that whole thing. And uh, and you'll see some results. And it also helps uh, for young ba- bands out there to get a good recording. You know, like, definitely. Because then it's like, as soon as the person leaves that club, they're like, man, that band was great. But then that memory kind of dissipates quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if they have, like, your CD, which nobody has anymore, or uh, your Spotify or whatever, then it's like they can listen to you and get excited about the next time you play or next time you come to yeah. the town. So, definitely. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. You, you did that with a, with a band that uh that we saw at Steel Hands, and then after yeah, it bought, I bought like four of their vinyls. I yeah. was like, they were like, we got all these. Four, I like had never heard of them before, and I saw yeah. them Steel Hands because my buddy uh, Nick was mixing them, and uh, they were this like sort of like indie like country vibes, but they were like so extremely cool. tight, like yeah. super talented players, like great songwriting. I was like, and so we like talked to them after, and they were like super cool and humble and like easy to talk to, and we we're like, yeah, we're, we're, we're musicians. We like had just come from this like wedding band gig we had. Um, and they were like, like we talked to him for a while, and they were like, yeah. I was like, do you guys have like merch or anything? And it was like, yeah, we're selling like vinyls. And they yeah. they handed me like they showed me like four albums, and I was like, I don't know any of these albums. I don't know the sound. And so they kind of like explained to me like where each of the albums fell in their like discography, and ended up just like impulsively buying all four of them for like a hundred dollars. <laughs> nice. But it's just like I don't know if you know if you if you got stuff to sell like that and you got music out, then True. you know people like you are what people want as fans. Like that's we want people like you and you want people like you as fans because sure. you're gonna do a deep dive. You're, you're not just a casual person that's like, yeah, that song was kinda cool. You're like, oh yeah man, I wanna listen to this B side or like yeah. the one unreleased song mm-hmm. and really go in. Like that's the Definitely. kind of fans you want, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Five of those are worth like five hundred of the just regular person that doesn't give a crap. You yeah, know? yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Everyone I've ever met who is a Villanova fan is like very passionately a Villanova fan. Nice. Like when I yeah. first started gigging with you, it was it was almost like overwhelming sometimes how interactive you were with people. And that just like I was like nineteen when I started doing background vocals for you. Um and yeah, you would talk to absolutely every single person and these people were coming up to you like they were lifelong friends and you're like, Oh yeah, I've like seen them at a couple of shows. I'm like I thought this was like like your sister's best friend or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like it, it had yeah. that kind of vibe. Um and I think that's that's like a really, really cool thing that you do. And I'm still very I don't know. I don't. I. I would like to adopt more of that in my own music career of like really creating those connections with people that listen to you. Well, thanks. No, you, you do that same thing. But I think the thing is like uh, for for you, it's just another gig. But somebody that's a real special moment for a lot of people. And you know, you, yeah, some people like might meet their wife at your show or like you know um, announce that they're pregnant or something like that at your show. <laughs> like it, it, these like milestones in people's lives sometimes kind of uh they uh, adopt you as that like vehicle to to have them and share those experiences yeah um or like you know just whatever people everybody has like their own experience and they come to their show the show for different reasons so uh yeah it's yeah it's cool it, people it tend to if you make it special for them they'll come back that's yeah. that's what yeah. awesome. are just looking for a special experience like they want to have a good time but they also want to um yeah feel special and I yeah, think that's a good way to go about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like one of the most powerful skills that I definitely, absolutely see you have. Like you maybe as like the, are just the biggest example of this I can think of. But like, like musicians or artists that have a vibe of like it's all kind of about me. Like you're here to see me. Like I'm the guy. Like like no one wants to support those guys like at all. It's like mm-hmm. you don't want to go to the show because they like don't give a crap that you're there or like feels like that. But like people like you. Um, or like people like I would say like Brendan Bowles kind of like this in a different way, but like people that can make you feel like they you know they really care about you because they do, and they like remember your name and they remember like stuff in your life, and they're mm-hmm. just like really genuinely excited to see you and for you to be there. It's like those people I feel like 
absolutely get the farthest. Which I think is also kind of why you see some like pop artists like Post Malone. Like everyone says Post Malone is like just the nicest, most genuine guy like you'll ever mm-hmm. meet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like it's tough to have a serious conversation when I'm, I know I'm wearing the sunglasses. We've been right wearing now. these too long. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like should we should switch. switch or something? I don't know. Maybe we should just commit at this point. I don't we know. Should yeah. I don't know. I think, what do you think? What do you think, Jason? Do we need to swap them out or are these? Let's, let's are just we swap, swap okay. again. Just swap. I want these again. All right, where are we going? These were fun. Let me try, um, try the uh, uh, hexagon, sure. there you go. hexagonal sunglasses. What would you yes. call these? I don't know. They Rihanna have mirrors on the bottom too. Okay, they got mirrors. Oh, that's okay. good. All right. I think um, the first wedding gig I ever played was with you, and it was <laughs> <Nicely> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah love thank it. you. Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the first wedding gig I ever played was with you, and it was like someone who loved your music and was like, "I want Villanova to play at my wedding." Yeah. Um, which I reference that all all the time. Yeah. We, we we've talked yeah. about it a lot. I love it. I think mean, um, you guys are doing good with that, that wedding. That's killer, man. We're, we're trying, man. I yeah. appreciate we that, are, We are doing our best. Like I said, you make a special... I mean, that's like the most special day for, you know, particularly the bride. So, mm-hmm. you, sure. So, there's a lot of pressure for you guys. But, I mean, I know yes. you guys kill it. That's what y'all do. So appreciate that. Yeah, man. Just make their guests have a good time and whatever. But, yeah, we're the worst wedding band ever because we just play our stuff. And people are like, yeah, we want you to play it straight to the bottom at our wedding. I'm like, dude, are you sure? Because we will, but, I mean. I have you know. listened to lyrics? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. But, yeah, but people that normally request us to play is like, we just play our stuff. So it's mm-hmm. strange, but. And they're that's a huge gig. fans of you. Again, yeah, every yeah. person who's a, every person I've met who is a Villanova fan is passionately a Villanova fan. Um, Thank you, yeah. So, uh, how do you keep a crowd engaged through a long gig? How do you keep them there? How do you keep them having a good time? How do you keep them, like, you know, caring about the music that's happening on stage? Well, you can't do it to everybody. So, if somebody loses interest or whatever, you can't really focus on that. But Mm. I guess uh, you need to practice and have your set solid, have your show solid, and uh, and go up there and just pretend like you were going to die after the show. And God is going to be like, what did you do with your life, son? You'll be like, oh, I tried to play the show good. You know, I don't know. And and it's like, if, if that means like getting on your knees or playing with your teeth or breaking a bottle over your head, like whatever you do, just know that like that could be the last time you're ever on stage yeah. for sure. You know That's awesome. I mean? Wow. Yeah. That's extremely like powerful to yeah. think about. Honestly. Yeah. But, and also, like you said, it's not all about you anyway. You're just there to uh, enter people into attainment, which is entertainment. That's all we're trying to do. Like, make people feel good. Make people feel fulfilled. Yeah. So, uh, if you think about it like that, it kind of takes your ego away, too. And it's like, oh, I'm just here to perform a job. I'm here. Yeah. To, you know. Exactly. That's what I, we do. I feel like and with like with stuff like, you know, crowd work and stuff, mm-hmm. it's like, it's a lot easier to do some goofy crowd work when you're like, they're hiring me to entertain. Yeah. And like, part of my job right now is like, Making a fool of myself on this microphone in front of a lot, of, you know, dressing in a bad costume. Not saying that that's making yeah. a fool, of, but it, you know, it what I'm is. <laughs> <laughs> it's very silly. Yeah, extremely silly. Man, that's fun. Uh, I would love to hear a couple, uh, like, of your wilder live music gig stories. Mm. Not super R-rated, please, okay. but uh, just some some kind of crazy <laughs> stuff Bobby you've fluids seen. Okay to talk about. <laughs> Depends, okay. I think. Yeah, use your, use your best judgment. Okay, well, um, so me and Bobby and, and Abel and young Sean at the time were playing in Bristol, Tennessee this one time, and um, it was like a pretty packed crowd in there. It was the place that, like, smoking is still legal inside there. Whoa. Like, I don't know how they wow. get around that loophole. So the whole place is just gray. It's just smoke everywhere. It's Ooh. hazy. There's there's people dancing. This one chick is, like, dancing. Up. She's got this long, flowing dress on and um, kind of, like, matted, crazy hair and stuff, and she's like, going in it like she's at a festival or something like that like dancing to us or whatever and then um halfway through the song i can't remember which song it is but she just like literally like pulls up her dress and like squats on the floor oh no and just pees oh my gosh she just pees on the floor that's horrifying and people are like rocking like, oh god like they start like backing away from her you know that's crazy yeah and then that's unfathomable like the, she gets taken out of here, and then all of a sudden, somebody comes over like a mop and is like mopping up the floor. Oh, man. You know? Typical Wednesday. Hey, <laughs> Bill Nova <laughs> Show. Couldn't pee on the floor. And, uh, that's a good tagline. Yeah, you know? <laughs> at least we never like peed on anybody. Like, that's, that's the true. thing. It's not like a, it's people pee at our shows. I don't know. Yeah. It was just once. That's crazy. But that's that probably was, the that's craziest wild. thing. Yeah, I was just like, wow. It was freaking hilarious. Then I yeah. couldn't even sing because I was just laughing so hard. Dude, that you was, know? Yeah, we've seen somebody like puke at it. I feel like puking is like, you, <laughs> yeah. gotta, you just expect people that People are going to puke. Yeah. Right. Yeah, especially like it was at... Uh, the context like, of it was really yeah. strange. Like it was just like the way it happened. Yeah. Like uh, uh, yeah. I was paying just too much attention. You know how you just you're, you're watching the crowd a little bit too hard sometimes. Uh-huh. Yeah. But it's like 
that's that's the joy I get being on stage is yeah. I get to look at y'all as it's much as you're looking watching. at me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was very like covert the way she did. Like she was like really trying to hide the fact that she was puking in her seat. It was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's kind of funny. I won't name the name of the brewery, but it was uh, a brewery too, yeah. which was really so. Oh. That's kind of the funny thing is you think about like these brewery gigs is this like you know classier, calmer environments where like people mm-hmm. are more just like laid back and just kind of sitting down listening to music. But it's like I don't know. I don't know if you've ever had sixteen ounces of like an 8.5% IPA, that <laughs> yeah. catches up with you pretty fast. Oh, yeah. for sure. It's just, it's just kind of funny, because this, especially like this brewery was like, they serve a lot of high ABV beer. Mm-hmm. It's like, I've never seen people party this hard at a brewery, but yeah. it's happening. They do, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The sneaky puke, that's so hilarious. It was so, like, I felt so Just terrible. went right back to a conversation. Yeah, so anyway, I was... <laughs> okay, have you ever been singing, and you start, you get tickled about something, you start laughing, and then you can't finish the song? And I haven't. Sam's like, Ilya, what's wrong with you? Come on, you got to sing. You're just like cracking up laughing. I haven't been able to not finish from like laughing. Sam okay. will. I'll, tr- we, I'll try to we'll, make her laugh. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, wear okay. our. You encourage. I'm a yeah. saboteur. saboteur. Yeah. We'll nice. Be, we'll be like wearing our in ear monitors, mm-hmm. and Sam will get into the talkback mic and be yeah. like, "I'm gonna make Ilya laugh," and that's all he needs to say. <laughs> that's true. And yeah. it's gonna make me laugh, or he'll do yeah. something goofy while we're playing. Yeah. Um, I like referencing like melodies. Like I'll do like the ABCs in a solo, or I'll mm-hmm. do like a. Uh, Oh, this is so I shouldn't admit to this on camera, but there's this a uh, certain like riff that like you would hear in like all these cheesy like old movies where like they cut to like a clip in like China or something or like uh-huh. just somewhere <laughs> in the east. Yeah. And it would go pentatonic pattern one, yeah. Yeah. So I uh this sounds so bad. I'm I I don't I I don't think this is racist. If this is, please call me out and educate me. But I'll like do that sometimes at gigs, and I'll like look yeah. at Ilya, and, like make like direct eye contact. Yeah. And, like, it's so yeah. ridiculous. And then play that. I, I always go laugh out of brain too. We even like nice. uh, at the first couple of trio gigs, um, like so she obviously her mic was live. We were still working out the kinks with like in ears and like all that stuff. But me and Brayden, our drummer. Both had like talkback mics where we could only you could only hear it like in people's in ears. Yeah, and so there'd be times where like me and, me and Braden would just be like, "You guys are just riffing." Yeah, and we'd just be I'm riffing, like, and Ilya would be like trying to play. And, I'm like, trying to like talk to the audience, yeah. and they're nice. just in my ears, like yeah, just saying some hilarious and outlandish stuff. Yeah. Yes, needless yeah. to say, we do not get booked to that bar anymore. Oh. So you know, live and learn, yeah. I guess. But oh you guys man, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, when I first met Ilya. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of her gigs were with you at a place called LJ's, oh, wow. or just yeah. around Lexington. Shout out uh, to LJ. Yeah. What was it like hiring Ilya back those back in those days? What was that experience like? That's a weird. Um, okay, so remember the thing where I was like, I taught my friend how to play guitar, and then there, and he got way better than me. Sure. Then, like I hired Ilya as, as a background singer, and it was like, where's that background singer at? Uh, can she sing the whole time again? I'm like, damn it, still, Ilya! Like yeah. what the. <laughs> No, but like she was like adored, like all those um, the Lexington peeps out there, you know, took her out there, and uh, yeah, they're like, this girl's got a real future. I'm like, uh, what about this guy? Come on, like I've been doing this for a while, guys. Come That's on, funny. Here. No, they they freaking love. I loved having her in. Um, she uh, and she's like just grown leaps and bounds and stuff, and and her harmonies have always been so good. And we just always have such a good time. And, you know, you guys are both, like, just charismatic. I think that's the thing that it helps sell the music, too, just charisma. You sure, know? yeah. So, and she's always had that. So, uh, yeah, it was good. No, I'm friends with a lot of redneck dudes. I mean, you know. Sure. No secret. Fun audience. Rednecks out there. Yeah, the, I Fun love, audience. The, love the, love the licks and redneck dudes. It's cool. And there's a lot of that out there. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, but I think you did good. I think you, you crushed it. They, they loved you. And um, there's there's all sorts of walks of life out there. That Not to say this, like. Just a bunch of rednecks, something like that. But um, Lexington's you know. got a—it's got a mix of people for sure. Yeah, yeah. a lot of different kind of folks. Yeah, I feel like in Lexington. If, I was thinking about this, like, because the Batman thing, like, if Batman was from Lexington, it'd be like, yeah, he's like. I am vengeance. Yeah. I am the night. <laughs> That'd be fun. You know, it's like yeah. be great. criminals, a superstitious and cowardly lot. You know? Yeah. I mean, hey, if <laughs> you, you talk ever... like that, it's like, I'm Batman. You know? Yeah. I don't know. It Perfect. wouldn't just be like, I'm Batman. Yeah. But it'd true. be funnier if Batman was from Lexington. You know what I mean? That's true. That's, that's definitely true. I think uh, that would actually work really well if the Batman ever played like CWP. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Like yeah. The Good Doing that pump. voice. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could do like the you know southern accent, you could do a bunch of country songs like as like that would be awesome. I'm sure they would love that. Batman love could that, do the southern accent. Yeah, be, criminals fear money. Yeah, it'd be great. I don't know. Maybe it was something to look into. Yeah. So, 
No, she's great though. Yeah. It's awesome. awesome. I was just Thanks. Uh, that was kind of a fun question. Yeah. Yeah, you told me you were going to ask him about me as a background vocal, and I just got really nervous as to what well, you were going to yeah. ask him. <laughs> we we had some it. fun times. We did. <laughs> well, you kill it as a background vocalist, as a lead vocalist. Like, you. you know, it's it's good either way. You know, it's, it's just one of those things about, you know, both you guys are versatile and you can do a bunch of stuff and. Play bass on the song, play guitar on the song, sing Push harmony on the song, sing lead, lead on the song. It's like, it's good to have those multiple hats, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I think I definitely learned multiple hats from you, um, or at least a lot of multiple hats from you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I definitely learned a lot about gigging just from playing with Villanova, um, just hopping in the van, going wherever you guys are going. Um, and those are some of my like favorite gig memories still to this day is just getting to hang out with y'all and hang out with Bobby and when Sean was the drummer and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, But then, yeah, speaking of diversity as a, as a musician, um, I know you are very like, like honestly just the king of diversifying. Like you try to just, I don't remember how you put it yesterday when we were talking, but try to put your eggs in as many baskets as you possibly can. And sometimes some of them hatch and you forgot you had them, you know? And, (laughs) um, but so, uh, you, I mean, obviously play guitar, piano, you sing, Mm -hmm. uh, you're in a million different bands. I think eight specifically, right? So something like that. That's a lot. Um, and then also you do some like video editing and Mm -hmm. shooting and, um, I know you have like a YouTube channel that you have mm-hmm. with your kids yep. and you have, so tell us about like all the other things that. Yeah. I, uh, started spreading out like that and I think it's a good thing to do cause I, I played in just one band for years. That's all I care about. Put all my energy into it and it, it was great. We got a record deal and we got to go to Los Angeles and I met like all my favorite rock stars and stuff. It, it was a really cool Dang. time. And, and that you know, time. You like, opened for Panic at the Disco, didn't you? Yeah. Whoa. Opened over Panic. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep, and uh, played a bunch of festivals, and uh, I met Corn, and that's like my favorite band. So like that was freaking epic for me, and and Man. that whole roller coaster was cool. And then it's like when that whole thing kind of dies down just a little bit, and you're and you're looking for other stuff to do, and now and now because now I have like little kids, and I'm like you know I my favorite thing to do now is like hang out with them. So I'm still trying to make a living playing music, and Villanova's still playing, but I'm also play keyboard. I've always played piano my whole life. So I've been playing a lot of bands with that avenue, like just putting some eggs in some different baskets. And it's like, uh, that's the thing. It's like you play keyboards in a couple bands and you got some videos out and, you know, you do some voiceover work and whatever. And all, and all of a sudden you get like a check for like 300 bucks that you forgot about or something. Like, oh, Dang. cool. That thing like hatched, you know, like that's awesome. Whatever, you know. <laughs> so I think that's like a good thing for musicians to do. Like learn multiple instruments if you can. Get involved in multiple media and uh, and just try like different stuff because it's probably going to pay off and and really like you have to be able to do it all these days. It's true. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great like, point. Start your own podcast. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> playing a couple bands. You know, start learning Definitely. video editing or, or or just do whatever. You know, yeah, just doing one thing kind of like just doesn't cut it anymore. You Definitely. Know? Mm-hmm. All yeah. rappers can sing it. All like the tattoo face rapper kids out there can like sing every Blink One Eighty Two song perfectly and play it on guitar perfectly, and they can rap every Tupac song. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, you got to spread out a little. You uh, know? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it's also like, you you have to, but it's also like such a good time to learn all these skills because like you really can learn so much from you know YouTube University, as people say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I, you know, I've I've been like deep diving video editing too, and it's like, oh, this is like all this free information is out there because all these dudes like, you know, gotta make the free videos to sell the course and you just learn so much <laughs> about anything like online. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah, so you've done, you mentioned voice acting. Mm-hmm. You've been in like a few video games now, right? Yeah. Yep. Shout out to Natalie. I know you guys just had her on. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to watch that. But yeah, she's the best. Like, first of all, her voice acting stuff is just amazing. But she's always just, she's like a love giver. She always like just gives the love and helps people out and stuff like that. So um, I had that uh, Abracazam, my YouTube kids channel. And I was point, putting out these good, it's like me and my kids. And like, we put out songs about like brushing your teeth. And we have a song about <laughs> Halloween. And it's just like, just funny. It's like us like playing with toys and like making these ridiculous videos. But Natalie saw one of those. She was like, you should do some voice acting. And you know, because we were friends and everything. And I was like, okay, cool. And so she um, hooked me up with uh, a few opportunities. And then I got hired to do a couple other voice acting things. But the video game stuff, I did was cool. Because uh, I'm like a villain. And the, it, I'm like a, in House of the Dead. And I did. The, awesome. It's like House oh, of the Dead. Like you, you got to like little drop the larynx way down. And then <laughs> I was, um, I think I was like a gargoyle or something. Ooh, and, nice. And then, yeah, like gargoyle number three. Yeah, level <laughs> two. Like, how, how does the gargoyle's like voice sound? I like that. 
Well, you can do like a like a reverse nice. scream like yeah. when you inhale, and I, it was like is it that or like a, the okay, like lower guttural thing. <laughs> nice. I'm a little dry today, sorry y'all. But yeah. you know, I don't, I don't even remember what. But I, I was just in there kind of doing a, a few things, and she was like, you know, you're great at this because you don't get embarrassed. Like you just kind of do it. And I'm like, oh yeah, like. I'm a total goofball. Like this is what I do all the time. So awesome. I love this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so, um, so I, I play this enemy called uh, Doctor Curian in House of the Dead. It's on Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation Five. So if you play House of the Dead and you defeat Doctor Curian, that's me. My, my nice. nephew, that's like, awesome. My nephew like played the game and beat it. And one day he's like, Uncle Brian, you were easy. Like I defeated you in like one try. I'm like, all right, that's <laughs> hilarious. Punk me out a little bit. Oh you know? man. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh my gosh! And then I'm in this video game called Origin Blind Maid, which is another horror game. So I've been in multi, like mainly like horror stuff so far, which is pretty cool. It's awesome. Yeah, it's good. Dang. Just another facet of stuff. And then, uh, and speaking of the the buddy John, then that I keep going back to that I taught guitar. Now he's better than me. Now me and him are in a band called um, Mars Quadrant. It's based out of Nashville, Tennessee, and we do. Um, like uh, multimedia stuff, and we do songs for like TV and movies and video games too. Like it's like production music, yeah, stuff. yeah, like sync licensing so, kind of stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So awesome. we get we just got some stuff for like March Madness actually. So yeah, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so by the time this airs, I guess it'll be after that whole thing. But that's that's, yeah. I mean, that's got to be like pretty huge with March Madness. Like that's got to be a pretty big deal, right? I, th- I think so. Yeah, like I mean, I did like once again, you just drop eggs in baskets, and you have no clue what's gonna happen, and then yeah. the one day. Somebody's like, hey, you made 12 cent on this Spotify play this month. You're like, oh, cool. And then one day he's like, hey, man, here's $1,000 for something you did last year. You're like, what? All right, sweet. You know, yeah. like, I don't <laughs> know. Awesome. I just kind of put them out there and yeah. s- see what happens kind of sure. thing. So yeah. it's a way to go probably. Dang. Well, Ilya? Um, well, I guess we can start to wrap it up just a oh, little yeah. bit. Um, we always like to ask at the end about kind of some of your favorite local spots. Um, so, like... I know you had some coffee at home this morning, but if you were going to go yeah. somewhere and get coffee, where would you go? Oh, man. I forgot the name of it. This is terrible. But it's like... What's <laughs> I didn't the, prepare you for this either. <laughs> I know. What's the oh, God, What's the one right across from Whataburger on uh, number one right there? It's like a little... It's like the Bricks? Bricks something? Brickhouse? Is it Brickhouse? Yeah. All right. Okay. Brickhouse? Okay. I don't know. Brickhouse is in West Columbia. Is That's it? right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking okay. about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. No, Brickhouse is great, man. That And the guy that um, runs, I think he's like from New York. He's like really cool. And I was doing some video editing in there with laptop and hooking up the Wi-Fi. And we were like just chatting it up. And he was just like a cool guy. So shout out to them. Nice. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name. But I always <laughs> just pop in there. I'm like, this place has good coffee. But nice. that's a great spot. Yeah. Cool. Uh, where are you going for, I, I, I ask it, uh, a uh, two-parter sometimes like if you were going out to dinner with like friends where are you going if you were taking the lady out where are you going oh god i'm terrible at this question uh <laughs> like i like fantasy ideal or just like a regular night like what, I, yeah what what's like what you would want to go do okay I, I need a stretch limo for one okay sure. okay <laughs> we need to get a cooler full of pbr am i right nice. oh, yeah, hey. just kidding maybe though we could maybe, maybe, maybe. pbr pbr there and uh yeah i don't like um, Sakatumi's always good. Mm. Um, shout out to Dave. That 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 place is is great. And um, downtown, I don't really hit like five points too much anymore. Mm. Like, uh, but LJ's is actually really fun if you're in the Lexington area. Like, Just if fun. you're into golf, do you guys golf at all? Uh, you do a little bit, a right? Tiny bit. Okay. But the, the driving range is fun. It's 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 fun to drive range and then also the bar right there. That's it's a yeah. good time for yeah. sure. Yeah, I'm terrible at it, but it's it's pretty fun. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, have, I have a good time. They got good food too, LJ's. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Aladia's is good in Lexington if you're in the. Oh yeah. Uh, you got like that spot? Oh yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then uh, where are you going for a drink, and where are you okay. going to go to shout enjoy out, some live music? Yeah, shout out to to Joey the bartender at Old Mill Brew Pub and all the cool girls that work at Old Mill Brew Pub in mm-hmm. Lexington because they are all like angels, and I, I see them all the time. And they're it's a good spot in Lexington right there. And uh, yeah, I mean, basically, well, I'm I'm going where my friends are playing. So like, if Sam and Ilya is playing somewhere, like I don't care where it is, I'm going there for a drink. So that kind of nice. really dictates where I'm going more so than anything else because you know. Beer, sure. beer is just beer, but like live music is that's what you're going there to see. So. Yeah. 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 Well, BC Villanova, thank you for being here. It's <laughs> a lot of fun you. having you. Uh, check out his Love music. It. Where can you uh, where can you find the, your music? BC Villanova on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. Still have some CDs available if you're into the oh, yeah. compact disc thing. 
the archaic, uh, the vintage stuff at this point. <laughs> oh, man. And, you know, if you need that, uh, hit me up on Facebook and message me. I can mail some stuff out to you. And Villanova is up on all that, those platforms as well. And, uh, yeah, that's it for original music. And, and look out for Mars Quadra. we got some stuff coming out. Um, that we're actually like releasing a record too. So nice, nice. Yeah. awesome, cool, cool. Thank you guys. Well, thank y'all for listening. Uh, shout you. out to our patrons Todd Baker and Chris Reed. Uh, if you want to be a patron, like we mentioned earlier, um, it's only seven dollars a month, less than a cup of coffee, to uh, support the podcast. If you enjoy it, if you gotten value out of this, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you, the Jam Room, for having us here uh, and recording us. Thank you, Zach, our producer. Um, great place to record stuff with all these. Super cool vintage amps behind us. Well, it's today. Thank you, Jason. Um, Thank you, got Jason. A dedicated <laughs> mastering studio over here. Uh, the only dedicated mastering room in Columbia, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. So, super great studio here. Uh, we're Sam and Lily. You can find us at Sam and I L L I A on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Uh, we play events. We have an open jam, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, thank you, Jason, behind the camera, JB Dash Creative Studio. I remember this week. Um, he's Can I give a few shout outs too? Yeah, sorry, absolutely. A uh, shout out to Stank Face too, by the way. They freaking kill it. And a uh, shout out to Southern Sky uh, Eagles Tribute Band with uh, Greg, Greg Bickley. Another one of those eggs in the baskets. I started playing in the Eagles Tribute Band. So shout out to Greg and all those nice. boys. Yeah, that's fun. Awesome. And uh, yeah, shout out to Bobby Dredd and, and Abel and, and Young Sean, Travis, all the Villanova dudes. Nice. That was it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I think, do we. It, yeah, uh, just finish that. Uh, if you want any really good graphic design or video or lighting or sound stuff, hit up uh, Jason Bozeman behind the camera, JB Crave Studio. Um, thank you for listening. I think that's it for this week. Uh, catch y'all in two weeks. Bye.